Internet, you tune into the Combat Jack Show. This is Throwback Thursday. This episode, this very next episode, is one of my favorite, if not my all time favorite Combat Jack Show episodes. Our guests were Chaz Williams, uh, the original gangster, and um, Graf, the rapper. He was managing him at the time. This episode was released on December 10th, 2010, five years ago. We were very raw, excuse the rawness and the poor quality of the the taping and production, but the story that you're about to hear, you can't find this on any other podcast. So Internet's Throwback Thursday's Chaz Williams episode recorded on December 12th, 2010. Throwback Thursday's Jim. Get ready for combat. Get ready for combat. Oh, for uh. Get ready for combat. Oh, for uh, uh, uh. Dallas on the floor, man. Are we live, A King? We live, we live, we Yo, live. Yo, Internet, Internet, you're tuned into the Combat Jack radio show, www.pnc, radio.fm. F your radio. With Dallas Penn and A King. We are having some technical difficulties. It was explained to me that the computer crashed. So my theme song will not be heard, at least for the first couple of minutes of this show. But fuck it, we're going original <laughs> style. We didn't have a theme song when we started in August, right, Dallas? No. We didn't have none of that. We didn't have the bells and whistles. No, but we was ready for combat. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't have we didn't have the drops. We didn't have the drops, right? Nope. This is nah, just like no this is just like when we first started. Did we don't have the freestyles with us tonight either, man? Yeah, we got that. We, we got, got the that. freestyles. We got the free- All right. We got no gunshots. You no know applause. we got a rapper in the studio. Are we gonna be able to get him freestyling tonight also? Oh, for sure. We All right, internet. How y'all doing, doing, man? How y'all doing? Together. This is the Combat Jack Radio Show, and it is nippy outside, yo. Brick, yo, Dallas. Thanks, nippy for, thanks for that. Um, Brick, Hennessy, man. That Hennessy was delicious, man. How was your week, man? Oh man. Yo, internet. Let me explain this, like. Like they like like, and this is no shots to anybody, but they set us up last week. We had the comfy headphones on, right? Right, Dallas. We right, had the levels right. in the whole night. Well, I mean, I mean, hold on for a second. We had a big show last week. We, we had, had a big show last we week. We had Noah Callahan Bevan. Is, is that Complex. why you had the the headphones out? Because we had big white in here, man. Yeah, it had to, had this oh, place uh, gussied up. Pausation, pausation. Hey, what's, what's up, man? Pausation. You know? So so we're back to basics now. What's up, yo? What's up, fam? What's going on? I think we, WikiLeaks, man. Somebody went on WikiLeaks. I'm, I'm just happy. I'm here, right? I'm, I'm happy Homeland Security ain't coming. Kick my door in. <laughs> yo, Dallas, man, you um, you was hitting the streets tonight, right? Oh, yeah. I was in the streets real, real crazy, real, real early. Two dope boys holiday party. How was that, man? Shout out to flood watches. Shout out to to the whole complex did, mag. Did they give you a flood watch to bring to the to the studio? Uh, they gave me a flood watch sticker. I okay, have, flood I watch. What's going on, man? Flood, what's, what's up? Flood, what Yo, up? Did you see SK? I didn't see SK. Happy birthday to SK. Happy New Year to SK, the king of the internet. King, well, I thought the king of the internet was um, Miss Info. Well, she's the she's the queen of the internet. No, she's the king. She was oh, okay. dubbed the king of the internet. All right. Well, SK is the prince. He's the president of the internet. Well, anyway, SK was supposed to be here tonight. Well, not really tonight. I wanted him here tonight, and he apologized. He said he couldn't be here tonight because it was his born day, and he was going to be tearing it up at the two dope boys party. Um, but we got SK coming in next week. Yeah. Not right. We got half you. Yeah. Hoff on Smash coming in next week. On Smidash. We're going to be talking about, you mm. know, this whole, our own internet hip-hop WikiLeaks situation going on. Right, the, the New Music Cartel. New Music Cartel uh, has been under some pressure recently. I mean, they, they, I think they're always under pressure because people generally hate them. They tell them, oh, man, you guys aren't even bloggers. Oh, man, you guys are bootleggers. And, and I guess it was funny until On Smash... Got shut down. On Smash caught one for the team. Mm. Basically. You know? On Smash and, um, and uh, the Jazz One. Mm. Uh, how do I pronounce that that, that site? D-A-J-A-Z-1. The Jazz. Okay. I never even went there. I never even went there. But they also got they also got clips. But let's just say On Smash. I mean, when you talk about the big three, you're talking about Dope Boys, Not Right, and On Smash. Yeah, exactly. So one of the big three. One of the big three caught one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, man, that's that's crazy. Are you worried about your site getting clipped? I am because I mean, you know, I mean, I I will from time to time post copywritten music, right? For you know, for explanation, right? Purposes right. for you know, for to help flesh out maybe something I'm writing, right? 
And you know, it's, it's all seems very subjective now. Well, you know, it's it's it's, it's a war, man. And niggas got to get ready for combat, man. <clears throat> you know. So what you wait, King? I'm chilling, brother. I'm chilling, chilling. Shout out to Combat Jack, Dallas Penn. You know, what I'm yo, saying? it's kind of weird without no music, man. Yo, yeah, it feels like. I, it, are we gonna wait? Uh, as oh, you no, work, we're good. We, we're we, good, so we can start throwing some music back on, like oh, actually, music, like the music breaks in the whole nine. You want to just <laughs> let's test, let's test the waters. Let, right let's now. see. Let, I mean, because right now I'm feeling kind of homeless in I a way. I feel like I'm in a cave, B. Yeah, like 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 we got we got I feel like a ch- we got kicked off the island. And yeah, now, this is NPR. <laughs> this is NPR talking right you're, into your now with the Combat Jack Radio Show. Yo, can can I just get one big shout? Out um, to Nation from Nye Right. He's been showing us a lot of love. Nate, you know what, what up? Nah, what's up, Nate? Nye Right, Nate. He, he, where is he? He's, he's in Canada, right? To, yeah, Toronto. I don't. He might be. He right. He might be right on East Houston Street. <laughs> <laughs> the beautiful thing about Nye Right Nation is that he is like like dude from WikiLeaks that finally we see his face, Julian Assange. Julian Assange. He is the Nye Right Nate is the anonymous internet. Like you might be seeing him and you don't even know you're looking at him. Yo, Nation, don't be um unlawfully finger banging though, man. Get consent. You understand? <laughs> yeah. So Nation is the hip hop Julian Assange. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Julian Assange. <laughs> All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. What are we discussing today, man? There's been a lot of change. First and foremost, um, you know, I'm a. There's a been, you know, the shift in radio keeps shifting, man. More shifts. More, More shifts. shifts. More well, shifts in the, in the urban as well as in the pop, as well as in the pop. You know, I mean, I, you know, I'm a heavy Howard Stern listener. Yes. Okay, and his contract with Sirius ran out, and oh, really? we didn't know if he was going to be on Sirius. To those that listen to Satellite Radio, well, anyway, he announced that he just renewed his contract for another Salutes. five years. Salutes. Yeah. You know, Howard yeah. Stern, you know, wow. Blueprint. The king. Blueprint. The, the king. The, the, the king, king of, of all media. Shit, you know, the king. The king of, of all media. For now. You know what I'm saying? Um, Not the internet, but this, all other media. This was the first week for um, The Breakfast Club on uh, Power 105. Is that, is that Angela Yee? Angela Yee, yeah, oh, man. I, that was Angela I, I Yee. I love this Angela was the, Yee. This was the first week. You know what I'm saying? I've listened to their show, man. They, they're catching it. They're, 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 they're trying to find their voice. No, no, wait a minute. They don't have a voice yet? They've been, well, on, you know, they've been on Sirius for, for how long? Two years? Three years? But going, hey, going, wait, from, wait. going from satellite is to terrestrial. Isn't it A King might have figured this shit out? You know, having, having to... Um, Having to censor yourself, you know, mm-hmm. now having to, to deal with the FCC and the whole nine, that does take some type of adjustment, I can understand. Being in a new studio takes some adjustment. Mm. I didn't, think, a new I didn't think Angela Yee would have that kind of problem. Angela Yee just seems like the kind of girl who, like, you know, like her lipstick never gets mussed up. Oh. I think, I think um, for Charmelaine the God, I think he, he, the transition problem. Charmelaine. Sha- what is his name? Charlemagne. 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 I was Charmelaine. like, talking about Charmelaine. <laughs> Internet, <laughs> internet, internet. That's super producer A King. Yo, Shamalane. Internet, internet. Right now, you already know how it goes down. A <laughs> King. Yo, I think <laughs> that's some beautiful nah, shit I right think, there. I think I think the transition probably is a little bit tough for him because um, he was out in Philly radio his last stint, and he got fired allegedly. Because of his last interview, which was with Beanie Siegel, and he was talking crazy about Jay. Uh. So you know the you know the, the speculation is that Jay might have you know shut that whole operation down as a result. I, you know I don't I don't like all this talk about Jay Z kind of like you know being this dude behind the scenes clipping people's wings. I, I didn't I didn't imagine that Jay Z would be that kind of spiteful dude. I mean Jay Z is he's he's on Charlie Rose. Killing it. He's he's turned a new leaf in his in, in his book, in his life, in the chapter of his life. Listen, he's he's a new man now. I don't I don't see him doing petty stuff like that. Yeah, man. Or but, does he? But you know, getting back to the, I I, I don't even know. I kind of lost track because uh, our intern, um, uh, what's our intern's name again, man? Jerome. Oh. Jerome was was whispering <laughs> whispering in my ear about some shit, man. Pause. Pause. Yo, we, yo, I feel so naked in Let's here. Pause it. again. We have can, music. Can we, can, 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 just throw some music just to make me feel comfortable. About, Get ready for combat. How about, how, how about we just vocal. do this? Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. What we, what we got? Well, anyway, what shocked me this week was um, Elliot Wilson. What happened to Elliot Wilson? Elliot Wilson was supposed to be the first guest on The Breakfast Club, and then they switched it up. And for this week, I don't know if this is temporary or permanent, but he's been hosting now. Um, he's been hosting in um, 
in Angela's position, man. Oh, in Angela's snap. Angela's spot. So he's been running the morning show on Salute, Sirius 45. Salute, Salute, Elliot Wilson. Salute. I thought you was going to tell me that Elliot Wilson came out the closet. No, no, he's he, he's not gay. <laughs> no, that's our, that's our dude. I mean, no, no, he's no, not Don't gay. put that out there, man. You know no, 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 no. I, I, I didn't say that, Elliot. Not, not, you know not come out the closet as gay. No, I don't want no problems with Elliot, B. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Elliot, especially, especially now that he's in radio. Right, right, Especially right. now that, I mean, initially, you know, when we talked to Elliot couple of weeks ago and even when you know we've been bantering with him back and forth up until Monday he was in a completely different industry F- fuck around Elliot could have broken the PNC studios and, and zapped their computer now he's in radio dude that's why that's why PNC computers ain't working Elliot Elliot, Elliot with the power of his so mind Elliot, so Elliot Wilson is the new Jay-Z Elliot Wilson is shutting people shit no, down I, 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 I see Elliot as a colleague dude did he's you see his tweets today were they, were they were they unruly? Were they? He sent a tweet that was that was uh, parallel to what you just said about him being, you know, the shutdown meister. Really? As See, as, so, he said, so, "As long as I'm in the game, uh, you'll never win." Woo! So I don't know Wait who he was so, talking. Woo! So, but so, I saw that Elliot. What up? So, so Elliot is the, the new king of radio. Elliot is the new king of media. Oh shit! Think about think about not just radio. I mean, he's on the internet. But I think he's only on the internet, so right. he's not on every net. Right. But he's in radio right now. He's in radio, and he's back in print. But he's in radio. He's, he's back in print. Like he's, he's You can't true, escape him. He's a true colleague right he's now. He's on billboards right he's now. He's a true colleague right now. He's in the ocean. Now, I'm going to tell you, I got an interesting tweet. He's in outer space. I got an interesting tweet. Watching you. Yesterday, from another colleague of ours, my good friend Peter Rosenberg. He just uh-huh. reached out to me yesterday morning and said, what's up? I said, what's up to him? It's all on, tweet, on Twitter, very public. And I said, yo, man, it feels kind of weird. We're ending this year. It's been a full year, and we haven't had beef with each other. You know what I'm saying? As a matter of fact, that, now that I think about it, this is the first year in about three or four years that I haven't had any beef with anybody. You know what I'm saying? But and, and, didn't, you, didn't you and Rosenberg have beef earlier in the no, year? No, no, the beef ended in January, and then I did the podcast with him. I think it was in the end of January, beginning of February. So we didn't have any beef. 2010 has been be free for me, man. I've been Hold on a second. I'm trying to think that didn't you open 2010 with some beef? No, I had, him? No, I had no beef in. So all beef was squashed for the for entire 2010. For, all beef. I've had no beef with anybody, dude. Combat Jack, you falling off? And man. then not nah, my fault. And then Peter was like, he joked and said, "Well, maybe we should falsify some beef." And I, you know what? I would do it if 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 the ratings depended on it. But when I think about it, man, like I go in. When I'm serious, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, shout out to Peter Rosenberg. Shout out to Elliot Wilson. No satellite to, radio. Sh- Not out, serious, sh- 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 but serious. Shout right. out to all our <laughs> colleagues in the whole nine. Now, listen, we have um, a major guest in the studio. You know about um, Chaz Williams? Chaz Williams. Tell, me about, tell me about Chaz Williams. Um, I used to work with Chaz, and um, Chaz was featured... On one of the most engaging episodes of American Gangster, BTS, BTS, um, that was the BTs. only good programming. BTS, it was had. one. Of, nah, you know, what? no shots, no shots. No, it's still tw- it's still 2010. Okay, we we go in in 2011. Okay, this is I the, mean, I mean, I like when BT plays Baby Boy. This is peacetime radio every week. This is peacetime radio 2010. The war starts in 2011. All right. All right. Can, can 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 you can you pledge that to me, Dallas? Which, which yes. Dallas Penn? Huh? Which yes. War? The whatever, war or? whatever war. No beef. 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 Anyway, um, vegetarian. Chaz Williams, man, uh, incredible guy, man. Like you know, it's kind of it's kind of hard to introduce him and not feel like I'm insulting him. But Charles Williams is one of the most preeminent bank robbery, but bank robbers of our time, dude. <clears throat> You know he's he's robbed. He, he was charged for robbing over sixty banks. Wow. He's been incarcerated se- several times, mm-hmm. and not only has he been incarcerated several times, he's escaped prison several times. So this this could be our last show. No, 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 no. I mean he's, he's not wanted any longer. Is no, he? no. He went from being on the on Amer- one of on on America's most wanted list to turning his life around. You know he came out in eighty nine. And he's got the most engaging story. You know, he's now working in the entertainment field. Um, what's he done? He's, um, you know, he started as a party promoter, doing some after-fight parties. So he built with Tyson. Mm. Uh, he promoted some parties. He was the first person to bring Snoop Dogg to New York City to perform. Mm-hmm. Um, 
He's worked with after fight parties like people will be fighting in the street and then afterwards no, no, like we party champ, champ, championship fights like Tyson joints. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like 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 boxing matches. Boxing matches, exactly. You know, he was um he was Foxy Brown's manager. Okay, he was yes. he was Fifty Cent's manager. What? He was Fifty Cent's manager, and then they had a falling out. And you know that song, Many Men. Many men, exactly. Wish death upon me. You know that um that Fifty mentions him. And that song, okay. Slim and switch sides on me. Slim is is Chaz Williams. Dang, fifty. Yeah. So you know what? R- rap nowadays is a lot like Catholic school compared to what it could because be. snitching is in. Well, yeah, and getting clapped is cool. And you know what? And I want to let's let's talk about shout that. out to Jimmy. Let's, let's talk about that with, with Chaz. Chaz, you know, is also in the studio with his artist Graf. You know, his, his, his flagship artist on Black Hand Entertainment. So I definitely want to give him the courtesy of, of having a couple of minutes to spit. Graf you know? bigged up MySpace back when MySpace was MySpace. Okay. Like, like uh, basically, Graf ended MySpace. Okay. You know, I never got into the MySpace shit. Well, Graf's song, MySpace Jump Off, essentially outed all the MySpace jump offs. You know where they had to go? Where? Facebook. Facebook. Twitter. Twitter jump off. Well, a lot of people still lock. Grav needs to drop that Twitter jump off. You know what? Let's call him in. Yo, A King, we ready for a music break? Yeah, let's go. Let's do this music. Internet, we about to give you some real shit. We about to interview the American gangster. Y'all motherfuckers running around, sagging, thugging up in the whole nine, claiming colors and all that shit. We got. You ain't doing shit. The original American gangster. You ain't robbing banks. You motherfuckers bow down. You ain't breaking out of jail. To the real shit. You know what I'm saying? You ain't doing shit. <laughs> y'all niggas ain't robbing banks, yo. Yo, y'all are tuned into the con. Bad Jack Show, A King, <laughs> Dallas Penn, www.pncradio.fm. Let's F go. Your radio. F your radio. F your radio. F your radio. You tuned into the Combat Jack radio show, Combat Jack, A King, Dallas Penn, www.pncradio.fm. F your radio. Are our levels up, A King? We good. Internet, we got some special guests in the studio tonight. I'm really honored. I don't even know how to um, introduce our next guest, Chaz Williams, a true OG and American gangster. He appeared in the BET series American Gangster, his episode is reportedly one of the most aired and watched of episodes in the series. Is that to your knowledge, Chaz? Yeah, no. Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, they got it on a uh, few channels now. Okay. Bio channel, history channel. You're on the history yeah, channel? Yeah, I'm, I'm all over the place. That's crazy. Now, you know, I, I feel kind of a ways because, you know, you, 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 you've done so many things. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's no question that you are one of the most or were one of the most prolific Bank robber, right? Bank robbers in American history. Mm. You've been accused of over sixty bank robberies. Right. Um, you're a legendary modern day bank robber, a man who successfully escaped from prison several times, mm. a man facing what was close to a life sentence, and who was able to significantly reduce said time period. Am I right? Yeah. 
Um, you've since, success, since, since then successfully turned your life around as founder of Black Hand Entertainment. You've gone on to work with superstars Mike Tyson, Snoop Dogg, Ja Rule, DMX, 50 Cent, Foxy Brown, Irv Gotti, Jay-Z, Damon Dash, and, 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 and to name a few, right? Um, you've had your own deals with Def Jam, Universal, Koch. Um, currently, you're here with your Black Hand flagship artist, Graf. What's up, Graf? What up, what up, what up, what up, what up? What's going on? That, that, that chain right there is real icy, B. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm working. I work hard for it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I see you. I see you don't stop, B. I can't stop. What else am I going to do? <laughs> exactly. Now, Chaz, man, mm. um, I was watching the episode today, man. I, I've seen it like a couple of times, man. And, and dude, it's, you're kind of like this fiction. You're like, you're like a fictional Character in American history, in terms of what an Amer, in terms of what American values are and American standards are, I see you as being in that category. You know, just because of all the all the things that you overcame. Let's start off with your origins, man. You grew up in um, Queens, right? Yeah, I grew up in uh, the South Jamaica, Queens. Uh, you know, actually, I was born in Harlem. Uh, I was born in Harlem, and I uh, was raised in. Queens, Southside, Jamaica, Queens, 40 Projects. Now, when you were growing up, was it the same environment that it is today? What was the environment over in um, the Southside, man? Well, uh, yeah, basically it, it was, you know, the same. It was just uh, a little more uh, commodity, you know, uh, a little more community type, you know. So it was like working middle class. Yeah, well, no, no, not, not since like that. It was... Uh, well, actually, when when everybody first moved over there, that's what it was considered. Right. Yeah. Or oh, that's what it was supposed to be. It was supposed to be. Yeah. Right. But it turned out differently. <laughs> okay. Now, I was when I was watching the episode, one of the things that you said that struck me was that um, from an early age, you felt that the racial injustice that you viewed in American society led you to believe that you know what. The regular way of like working nine to five and and busting your fingers to the bone and and supporting Ameri like the American government in a standard way wasn't what you saw your life to be played out. Right. Well, one of the most you know s significant uh, persons in, in my life was my father. Right. So uh, what what I what 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 I would see he he served in the army. You World, know. World War Two or Korea. Yeah, World War Two. Okay. And were y'all close? Yeah, yeah, he's real okay, close. Okay. Yeah, you know, he, you know, fought for the country to, and all of that. And um, when, you know, uh, some of our roots is in the South, right. you know, in Florida. Okay. And, uh, you know, that's where he's from. So, you know, in, in the summer and some other occasions, special occasions, holidays, we used to drive down. And uh, from from New York from to Florida. New York to Florida. It's like about an eight hour. Like I've I've taken that eight drive hours, in. like about eight days. <laughs> <laughs> and, and my father used to have to keep his forty five in his glove compartment. Right. You know, from from the military, is his military forty five. Forty five in the glove compartment. And um, you know, as a kid, you know, being on the road at that time, the deep in the south, you went. The more obviously, obviously, the inequality was. Now, as a, at a young age, man, did you really f like you would drive like since you was a child, like three, four, five years old, right? Yeah, yeah, and a little older than that. And did yeah. you feel like fear or like a detention, like the racial oh, yeah, tension? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, if you got stopped, you know, right. the, you know, by the state troopers, you, you can, you know, the way they talking to you, you know what I mean? Right. Um, uh, when we stopped at, at a, a rest stop, so to speak, you know, it's two different bathrooms. Right. It's like, hurry, hurry, hurry up, let's get out of here, yeah, right? Well, no, you can't. It's the white bathroom right. and the black bathroom. And you saw that shit. Yeah, yeah, I saw that, you know. So, you know, early on, you know, that you couldn't sit at the same counter right. as white people. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I witnessed a lot of things. And, and now, now, let me ask you. Mm. I would imagine that even though it was obviously wrong, a lot of some people at that time just accepted it as that's what it the is. Normal, the normal, the of life. But now, did did it make you angry or like how did it make you feel? Well, what I felt was that my father could you know go and fight and die equally, but he couldn't come back and live in this country equally, and and that bothered me a great deal, you know. And um, what, he, what were his politics like? Was he 
Did no. he school you on? Because you know some. You know. You know how it is. Like I grew mm-hmm. up. I, I I have a family where we talk about racial injustice to this day. So I'm very sensitive to that. Mm-hmm. But a lot of my peers, a lot of our peers, tend mm-hmm. to accept a lot of shit. Were, right. were you more sensitive or? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I was more sensitive. because of your pops. Because of my father. Um, you know, another you know figure as we was coming up later on was you know Malcolm X. Right. Um, also, uh, my cousin uh, is Matula Shakur. Okay, I didn't know that, man. Yeah, and um, so we, you know, we came up in a time where, you know, we were, you know, there was a level of consciousness that, you know, we were getting. It was unavoidable. Yeah, it was definitely unavoidable. So you, you know? couldn't be sleepwalking like. No, nah, if you slept, cats, if cats. you slept walking Florida r- across the wrong track, you'd be hanging. Yeah, you'd be sleeping. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'm swinging. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, you said something in the episode where you said your first encounter with the law was when you was twelve years old. Yeah, tell tell us about that. Yeah. Um, I was actually arrested for uh, uh, my, what was, was my first armed robbery, and um, at twelve, at twelve, yeah, it was you know group, group with, with a real gun. We only had one gun. That was bad. You know? We only. <laughs> I mean, at, at, 12, at twelve years old, the gun I had had, had 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 the front of it painted red and it shot water. Yeah, that was a mistake. You know. What I mean? Right. Well, what, how'd y'all find the gun, man? Uh, you know. Well, uh, you know, we would borrow our parents' weapons. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like without them knowing without it. Without them knowing. Right. It, of course. Yeah. And. Um, what happened was uh, as we were leaving, you know, the uh, the the police, the patrol car came, you know, to the establishment, and you know, we we, we you know broke out running, right? You know, I learned something else, you know. So you didn't you, you didn't you didn't you play don't calm. Run. You don't yeah you don't run. You right. know what I mean, you and, look you played guilty. Yeah, and um, yeah, I was arrested, you know. But I was at that time, you know, it's like a. Well, even now, I think it's a it's a juvenile offense, you know, right. juvenile delinquency, and that's where you know when my first breast with the law started. Now, how did your how did your parents feel about that? Oh, they didn't they they wasn't with that, right? You know, yeah, definitely not. Was, you know? was you I, I'm, because you speak with so much respect mm-hmm. for your family, particularly your father? You're probably afraid. Uh, yeah, what, yeah, he got he got at me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he got at me once they came and got me. Right, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Yeah. Chas, can I ask you something? Mm-hmm. I mean, after your, after your dad gets at you, because it, my dad is from from uh, Richmond, mm-hmm. and I feel like when, if you got a Southern father and, and someone who's experienced those things, that that's the only person really in the world you're ever afraid of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. You know, and uh, once you're not afraid of them, you're not afraid of nothing. Yeah, but definitely, uh, you know, my father had that effect on me. You know what I mean? I, I respected, you know, him. I mean, he told me, like, you know, the things like, uh, you know, in the South, like, when he come up, you couldn't really, you, you barely could look directly in somebody's eye. And the elders, an yeah. elder, right. Yeah, so he would tell me, like, man, you know, you always look a person directly in the eye, no matter who he is. You know, he, he would go all the way to the left, away right. from that. You know, the southern mentality, you know, of cowering. He never, you know. He never cowered. No, no, he never cowered. You know what I mean? I don't care where I was at when he had to come get me and what courtroom and whatever jail it was, he would be there. Right. It's interesting because last week we had um, Noah Callahan Bever mm. in the studio and he was telling, he's a, he's the editor in chief of um, Complex Magazine. Okay. And he was telling us that when he was 11, he had his first brush with the law. He stole... Um, shoplifted. He shoplifted. Different from stealing. Yeah, he shoplifted a public <laughs> enemy. Let, um, let's, let's, listen. He, he, we, listen, all of us in here, let's be honest, okay? <laughs> if we ain't going to talk like men in here, turn the fucking radio off. So he shoplifted a public enemy cassette, and they caught him, and they let him go. And I was reading his story and your story and just seeing how... Well, of course, I didn't know you had the... The, the pistol with you, so yeah. so that was a whole different situation. Mm-hmm. But it's just crazy how you know justice is meted out to different people differently. Mm-hmm. Right. So you, you get arrested and you go through, ju- through juvenile, yeah, right? um, Spofford, Spofford, yeah. and I, and 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 that's a, and you escape from Spofford, right? Well, that was later. Okay, you know, it, it, you know, my my um my new career didn't stop there. So you know? <laughs> so let me ask you this, man. You you got a lot of respect for your father. You get busted. Mm. 
I would imagine most kids would be like, that's it. I'm, I'm scared straight. Mm-hmm. I'm not fucking around with the shit. What kept you going, B? Well, that's that's where I kind of lost my, my fear of, you know, the, the prison system and all that. At 12. And, 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 early and, right. and, you know, it was, you know, they couldn't, you know, do the spook thing about what, you know, what goes on in, inside, you know what I mean? So. But was it scary the first time you went? No, not really, because basically, you know, um, some of the people I were with, you know, they, they had that experience previously. Right. So, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't scared, you know, at all, not at all. So it was a joke. It wasn't a joke, but I wasn't, I was more scared of my father than right. them. You know? <laughs> <laughs> nah, it wasn't a joke, you know. So eventually, you going in and you going out, and then eventually you find a way to break the system. Yeah, well, you know, basically down, you know, after, uh, after, uh, as I got older, I mean, I, you know, things kept happening. You right. Know, uh, you know, I was getting in problems in school and, you know. You didn't like school or? I, 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 I like school. I just didn't believe that school would get me what I wanted. Right. Because of what I was seeing, you know, the disparity of what I was witnessing right, right. in you're, America. You're, you're, you moving at a, you're moving at 100 miles an hour yeah. mentally. Yeah. You know, between driving from New York to Florida and those experiences, which kids in, in New York don't have. Kids in New York don't realize there's another world out there. Mm-hmm. And then you're running with, uh, I guess, uh, some guys that are a couple years older than you. Exactly. And, yeah. and, and imparting those experiences on you. So you're moving at mm-hmm. a pace, really. I feel like school really can't, can't, can't keep your mind locked in because mm-hmm. your, your mind is already... Screaming at a hundred miles an hour. Yeah, so I was having those kind of problems with you know my belief in in the school system. Right. Um, so uh, you know as things you know progressed in life, as I became older, you know I you know things actually got more serious. As right. Of course. As in terms of well, your rap sheet is growing now. Right. In terms of you know you're becoming familiar, history. and according yeah. to the law, you you you're not taking you're not you're not showing the American government and the, the laws any respect, so right. they got to deal with you, yeah, harsher. Yeah, and so you know one, uh, you know one of the uh, escapes occurred. Your first, tell, tell us first about your one, first okay, escape. The first yeah. one was, uh, you know, from well, actually from the courthouse because uh, it was, you know, it was bringing me from spot, but from the youth house, and uh, you know, as the, as the the you know little youth prison bus pulled up um you know i saw an opportunity once because they didn't cuff us right you know what i mean and i saw an opportunity to you know get away right yeah so basically that first one was like that uh and um you know, it was just me taking off. You know, as it was as we was going down the ramp, walking because we had to walk from the bus across the sidewalk and down the and ramp. And people weren't paying attention to you, yeah, or? right? Yeah, they was there. You know, they they they, they were line. You know, they lined up on both sides of the sidewalk. Right. You know, so. And you just broke I was out. Pretty tall dude at, at, at a young age. So right. Yeah, yeah, and I just broke through. The, and they couldn't catch you. They they, they chased you. Yeah, they tried. They but, tried that. And then, but and did they eventually? Come to your house and get you, or you would just no. They came to my house, okay, but I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> so you was the gin- gingerbread yeah, man, I, right? Yeah, I wasn't at the I wasn't at the crib. <laughs> so on top of you mm-hmm. understanding that you know you don't fear the repercussions, mm-hmm. um, and that you could get away with it. Well, not really get away, but you mm-hmm. the the only thing you feared was your father. You also caught now a taste for figuring out a way to break through whatever predicament you were trying to they were trying to lock you up in well I, I what it was i knew that you know i had a lot of i guess what you might say fighting me right and i i would never give up you right. know and um i would always look for a way to get away now you ever take an iq test man yeah, yeah. Well, what'd, what'd you score? Because you you talk in genius talk right now, B. Yeah, I, I don't even know. They you know they did it in the in the jails, right? And all that you know. They, they, what, so you don't remember what you? Uh, no, nah, I don't. I remember. would love to find out what your your IQ remember. score is, man. Because for somebody that could find out so many different, and we'll get to that, but mm-hmm. in and out of jail, like like for real, B. Like that shit is is, is astounding to me. Yeah, and and well, not just me. It's astounding to everybody. Yeah, and some of the things that, you know, like I saw a lot of things, man. I mean, I witnessed like you know. 
when, when I'm going through the South at a young age, the chain gang, right. you know, it's, 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 it was, I, I was getting a lot of stuff, you know, a lot of experiences. And, you know, I witnessed, uh, you know, I even witnessed where in the South we was down there, I forget what it was, but it was some kind of protest. And uh, they were sicking the dogs and right. the dudes in the fire hoses on women and children. But you saw that. You saw oh, yeah, all yeah, that yeah. shit. I, yeah, I saw all that, you know. And um, I made up my mind. And even when I used to watch uh, Martin Luther King, and, you know, he did great things, right. you know, no doubt about it. You know, but and he, and he had another kind of heart because, you know, I had made, already made up my mind that I would never march into a bunch of white people with guns and dogs without a gun myself. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? Right. So, yeah, but, um, yeah, so I saw all those kind of things. I came up in an era of time, uh, when, uh, you know, either you, you, I mean, the way we felt about it, you conformed or you revolted, you know, and, you know, I chose the, the, you know, the, 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 to revolt. Right. Yeah. Okay, now I, I want to move a little bit because you got, you got such an extended history. The thing that you, one of the things that you became great at was robbing banks. Mm -hmm. How did you get into that? Wow. Uh, well, it was almost like this guy Willie Sutton said, you know, that was where the money was at. Right. <laughs> you know, any, anything else for me would be double hustling. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I'm not going to take something, then sell it. You know, that's two, that's double, double the risk. Right. If I'm going to go, I'm going to go and... Aim, you aim high. Yeah, might as well aim high. Might as well because the consequences. Aim high in the bank, right? Yeah, the consequences is the same. So yeah, basically that's what it was. That's was where the money was. It was also for me, you know, a a direct because those laws at the time, the laws of segregation laws, you know, was sanctioned by the government. You know, it was it was a law of the land. So that was another strike for me at them. You you know what I'm saying? Like you know, I said, well, that's that's where I'm going. I was I, I wasn't into really. With the exception of that first one, uh, yeah, then Leah's lady, we did some kind of payroll thing, but, you know, for the most part, you know, I didn't, I, I didn't rob individuals, you right. know, especially black people. That was not in the, you know. So was, you were politically minded, conscientious. Yeah, but I was robber. also, yeah, sort of speak, but, you know, not where I was a Robin Hood, not where, you know. You didn't like, give to the poor. No, nah, I didn't give to the poor. I gave, yeah, to, to uh, you know, whoever was with us. Right, your you crew. Know, right, right, the crew, you know. And to how my how deep was your crew? Well, yeah, we was kind of deep, though. Mm -hmm. You know, throughout the years, yeah, mm -hmm. we, we, we were kind of deep. Because <laughs> I, I got to But wonder. we didn't, like, you know, you know, everybody didn't go and, you know, do the same banks. You know sure, what I mean? sure. Everyone doesn't do a job right. together. But, right. I, I mean, I, I'm so, my mind is blown now thinking about bank jobs because, I mean, you can't, that's the one thing you can't do by yourself. You have to be with a crew. But how do you trust? Yeah, we don't pass notes, you know what I mean? That, 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 that's not in the, in the bank robbery manual. <laughs> So you go in in hard body. You go in. Yeah, we, we you lock the door behind you. Yeah, we consider takeover bank robbers. We mm. take we take the bank over. Mm. Yeah, and, and I mean, you could always trust your crew. Like you would have to. That's you, 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 yeah, definitely you would have to. Um, you know, like we also realized it was a life and death matter. You know, like when some police came, you know, it, it's a firefight. You know, we not throwing our guns down in the bank. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, definitely it was, you know, a, 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 a super trust. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. You know, you put your life in each other's hands. What, what could a job net? What could a job net, y'all? Yeah, that's that's well, the question. Like it depends, you know. Um, you know, because the kind of takeover bank robbers we were, we would, you know, take the counters and the vaults. You know what I mean? We would always try to get to the vault. I mean, this, this is Chaz. This is the movie. This is the movie. Yeah. I mean, the counter. Anybody can do the counter. Yeah, anybody can do the counter. They but don't, they but don't. to get the vault now, you're in there for an extended period of time. Well, we we mastered that. So at the time we was in there, it wasn't all that long. Now, now I was, I was, I was, I, I heard that you know your, your some of your bank robberies took less than a minute. Yeah. Like you, you, you had it set up so that it was less than a minute. Mm -hmm. So let's let's get you get nabbed for your first bank robbery, right? Like, no, not not no, your first bank, but you get bank. you get you get robbed. I mean, you get you get nabbed, yeah. um, and then and, and but never in a bank. No, they no, not in a bank. They right, they basically right. put yeah. the pieces together. Right, How right. did you get nabbed the first time? Uh, 
basically, uh, it was through somebody that you know that said something. You know, was did they rat or were they not careful? They they wasn't careful, and then eventually, then they rolled over. Then the pressure they rolled over, right? Yeah, they and was it somebody in your crew or somebody affiliated with no, your crew? Some, yeah, it was somebody. In, well, initially it was somebody affiliated with it, but right. then it was a crew member that spoke to them. Right. And then it was the dude that spoke to them who, you know, turned over. How much time did they give you? Uh, that time I got when, uh, 15, I got 10 years. In the, I got a 10 year sentence uh, for the bank robbery and a five year sentence for the conspiracy to commit bank robbery. Right. So. So basically, fifteen, right? Fifteen, yeah. And you broke out. Not then. Not then. You no, I, 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 no, that's you know, the, I broke out later. Okay. Um, so how much? How much of that time did you serve? Uh, well, I got a reversal on the ten. I ended up having to serve out the five. Okay. Yeah. So you served the five. the five. Yeah. You came back. Came came back. And you said, "I'm ready to do this again," or you were yeah, like, "I can't fuck with this shit anymore." No, nah, I went again. It was you know, <laughs> continuation. <laughs> Now, now, hold on for a second. Hold on a second. Now, wait a minute. Now. Part two. <laughs> it, but it's got to be then. It, it's it's got to be the rush of devising the perfect scheme. I mean, no, what, what not, brings you back into the that life? Yeah, is it a rush? Is it like a high, dude? Nah, you know, I, I hear people talk about that. Maybe some people get high like that, but nah, I, it was you know about you know doing whatever we needed to do to get what we needed to get. You single mindedly looking at the paper. There's, yeah. there's no. Obstacle between you and the paper. You you got you got X ray vision, and that's all you see. That's, right? You're, you're not like the Batman's uh, arch nemesis Joker. You're not there to just no. You we know, ain't there to play around for shits and giggles. Okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah. Now you, I, you said I, it was said about you that your first stint in jail was disruptive and mm-hmm. violent. You was crazy and wild, assaulting CEOs, stabbing cats in the heads with forks. Yeah, that was. Uh, were people fucking with you, man, or, or were you nah, angry, or were you like what? What well, drives some, you to? Well, you know, like what's going on back in the, then? What's going know, on in the mind of a young Chaz well, Williams? Well, back then, I mean, you know, you, you you when you come to one of the penitentiaries, you definitely had to establish that you you know you wasn't nothing to play with. Not that somebody fucked with, it, but if it came to you, you just had to deal with it a certain way, to, you know, because. Uh, those are federal prison penitentiaries, right. which were different than you know being in New York. You in New York, basically, you got mad homies and different people, you know, that know you from different. It's, fr- it's, it's relatively friendly. Well, you, they already may know, but if you're outside of New York in one of those federal penitentiaries, people are in there from all over the country, you know, that don't know and don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, you know, when you come in, you you know, like if if there's a a, a problem you definitely got to establish like that. You you ain't taking no shit, right? You know what I mean. And basically, after you establish that, you don't you don't get that problem again, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so getting back to this man, um, I was reading that you. Um, uh, let me let me let me just uh, go back and you know put put something in perspective. So okay, the first time, okay, you know that was an escape. And then uh, I did get captured from that, you know, eventually on that. And then they well, gave from the from 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 the, from from the youth to the youth yeah, okay, yeah, the yeah. bus. And then I was uh, given uh, an eighteen month, you know, juvenile sentence for eighteen months, committed to the juvenile facility upstate. Mm-hmm. And I escaped from there. Okay. Also, how did you escape from there? Uh, we caused a diversion, and the reason like it, a bit used to have these cottages, different cottages that we were in. And, you know, I was kind of, you know, known throughout, throughout the, and I got different people at the four o'clock count. Once they take that count, um, you line up to go to eat all the cottages. And, uh, you know, I had kind of arranged for several disturbances to break out at the other different cottages. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? So they, they so it would bring all the perimeter people to oh, those places right. because you know it was like uh you know mad the services they got they you know when they push that button they they come running you know to, to to quell the disturbance and I got out the cottage and made my way to the forest you know and, and it's cold up there yeah yeah but and so you go through the forest mm-hmm. and you, you hitchhike or like how do you get back to where you no where you, I had a, I had I had somebody. So your shit is always organized. Yeah, yeah. I had somebody <laughs> sitting on the road. So, 
it may mm-hmm. seem that your actions are reckless, but it is yeah. never reckless. Yeah, I had somebody, you know, sitting, they weren't real close, but I had to make my way there. And uh, once I made my way there, then I, you know, I was driven to the city. Right. Yeah. Back to and, the city. And, uh, but after that particular one, once I was in the city, I went to Canada. Okay. You know, to just avoid. And I read about that. Like, right, you, you, did, you did some time in Canada. Yeah, we went up there. It was a different kind of look, you know. Um, so, Chaz, you just, at that time, you could not stay out of trouble, dude. Nah, nah. We, at that time, when we went to Canada, they had a, a foreign money exchange at the airport that we went at. Right. And, um, you know, basically, the, the reason we got kind of captured, because a lot of the stations up there were, were, were in French. Uh-huh. So we didn't we didn't really listen to the radio or watch the TV, but we were all over the place, and right. we didn't, we just you know we didn't make it out of there. I mean, wasn't too many blacks at that time, of course, rolling around in Canada, right? And uh, they, they they captured us. Now you were doing some crimes in Canada, also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, <laughs> I was deported, you know, right? Eventually, now after I, after I was locked, you know, in in Bordeaux prison. And which what you say is the worst prison oh, you've ever man. been in? Uh, yeah, that was that was rough. In Canada, Bordeaux, Bordeaux prison was a, was a rough prison, and um, you know the experience was crazy because you know when when you know we had lawyers, you know we talking to the lawyers, and uh, so when they bring us out into the courtroom for the first time, you come out on this like this box, this elevated box, right. and you come out. When I came out, way in the front is the judge, and he had on a white wig. Right. The prosecutor had on a white wig. Even my lawyer had on a white wig. Right. So every so you yeah, were you, and you we were, had an interpreter. Yeah. So, so you was in a time machine. Yeah. And exactly. And they were talking French. So we had an interpreter interpreting, you know, what they were saying. Right. So yeah, that whole experience was pretty rough. So mm-hmm. let me ask you, man. You going through this, man? In your head, where, where do you see yourself? Where, where do you see your future, man? Like, where do you see yourself? If you can go back, where do you see yourself 10, 15 years in the future? I'm not even sure if I was um, looking that far ahead. Um, I, I, actually, I wasn't looking 10, 15. You know, I, I was basically uh, later, not not then, later once I... Um, went away to the uh, I got a federal case later the one we was talking about right and at that time I I, I started looking basically ahead of the game which is what led to the um, the bank robberies while I was in prison okay right now, which is and let's get back to that let's go to a musical yes. break and then let's come back Chaz Williams Graf Black Hand Entertainment you listen to the Combat Jack show Combat Jack Dallas Penn A. King www.pncradio.fm F your radio Uh, 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 uh Uh, 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 uh. Combat Jack Radio Combat Jack Dallas Penn Hey, King, your graph What's the name of that track, man? That was my freestyle on Roman's Revenge I called it I'm Showing Off Again I'm Showing Off Again When did you, you record that, man? Last week You, you kind of went crazy on that, man I right. did, man I think, um Wrapped up my name must have put like steroids in a microphone or something. Yeah, man. Where's your what? Wh- what are your influences, man? Like, like st- stylistically in the whole nine, man. Because I'm getting a lot of influences. Like, what you hear? I hear Buster. I, I of course, Buster. I hear Eminem. I fuck. With I mean, those Buster. are the which two. Is, th- which is Red Man, really? Which is Red Man, you know? But I'm asking <laughs> you, like, what are, what are your influences, man? I fuck with both of those artists. I like um, I like a lot of shit that's going on right now. Man. Okay, but uh. Anybody got some creative to offer? I listen to everything. I look outside the streets, what's going on in the, in the households where I'm at. Everything matters. Everything influences me. Like I'm like a sponge. Like you could say one word that'll spawn a whole rap that's six minutes long. Right. Mm. right. So you so you 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 dream words when you, like you see words yeah. in your in your head all the time. Not, not even just I mean I take them from outside. Like you might just say one phrase and and ding that should just set set an alarm over my brain and I will write a whole record. Okay. Over one word. Okay. So, now let me ask you: With everyone making popular music, uh, using less words, mm-hmm. you in a way you're going in the opposite direction. You're going with with the historical. It, uh, it depends on what 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 the uh, material is created for. Like, this is just pure hip hop, pure unadulterated, raw, uncut hip hop for those who like real shit. Mm-hmm. Now, if I'm making it, I don't. Seldom do I make records for radio. I do records that I like, and they just happen to. <laughs> 
I'm just lucky that the, that, that the public agrees with my taste mm-hmm. and they can make it to mainstream radio. But it just depends on the beat. Mm-hmm. It, like how many, you know, what I choose to do. The music dictates what I do. I don't go with any fucking rules or politics, none of that shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, Chaz. Yeah. How do you pull off Robin Banks while you're in jail serving time? Like, like, okay. like. I know, but explain to the listeners Hypnosis. how you pulled off <laughs> robbing a string of banks while you were quote unquote. I'm going to try to condense it, you know, like American Gangster condensed yes. my, my, my entire story. But they did, you know, cover that that portion of it. And, you know, to, to, to just basically, um, that's that's when I kind of, you know, was looking more to the future about right. getting, getting out of it, you know. So, um, I was actually in um, in the hole at the time, and in Michigan, right? Yeah, in the federal prison in, in Michigan, and uh, I used to have a connect that I would get, you know, the uh, policies, prison policies. They used to have a this this little uh, newsletter that used to come out. You know, but it was in the administrative building. Right. So, so it was. For, it was. It was, it was basically the, directed for the staff and the, the staff. Right. Yeah. Administration. So I would, you know, I had a kind of a connect to get that, and you know, I got it while I was in, you know, in in, the, in segregation in the in the hole. Right. Um, you know, just for some reading material. You know, to pass the day because you locked up twenty three hours a day. So, um, in that uh, there was a, a new policy coming out. That outline, you know, a, a study work release program that they were going to use as a pilot program. So it was experimental, right? And, and this is in the seventies. Yeah, and the facility I was in, Milan, it was one of the facilities that was, uh, you know, targeted to to have this program, right? And in it, they outlined, you know, all the qualifications you had to have that, you know, the, the prisoner had to have to get in that program. So I got. All that information. So well, knew, in advance, right? I knew exactly what to do to qualify for the program. You became a model, yeah. So inmate to right. specifically then, for this program. Yeah, you had to do certain things, like take certain programs because they would, you know, evaluate. Uh, actually, you know, GED. You had to do all of that because, and that that facility was picked because it was a college that was it was. A, uh, one of the top colleges in the country at the time, and probably even now, the University of Michigan right. was close to there. Right. And that was, you know, one of the schools that they were going to use, you know, for this program. And, uh, you know, I got with a couple of, you know, my, my guys from New York and, you know, basically gave them the, the information and told them this is what we're going to do. And in my, what I was going to do once we got out, you know, I wanted to uh, get my bank roll together. So what what I came up with was that you know when we go out, you know we're gonna get busy, right? Right. And so you qualify for the program. Yeah. You qualify for the mm-hmm. program. Now, do they take you from the prison to the campus on a daily basis? Yeah, on a daily basis. So how many hours are you supposed to be on we, the campus? Well, uh, we got to we usually go to dress out. At six in the morning, right? And because the the the, the work release bus so it takes a lot of people to you know, you know, fills the bus up, and it takes different guys to the, you know different jobs. Different, okay, yeah, exactly. You know, different stuff. Right. So we start out about six in the morning, um, and we used to arrive at the campus about eight thirty. Right. So, and we didn't have to be back to the prison until twelve midnight. <sighs> Crazy. You know, so, so well, you are you are to be picked up. You know, you would be picked up in that round robin of pickups. You know, right, right. And then, by you know that you had to be at the, the bus route. The bus was scheduled to be back at the prison at twelve. Right. Yeah. So. I got to tell you something. That that to me right there is the most perfect scheme ever. Well, yeah. Well, you know what I what I and Dallas, you didn't know this about this man. No, no. I, I'm I'm here right now, just catching all this. Brand new, right? Right. That is the perfect. I mean, like, first of all, y'all are already in prison. In prison, so right. it, it, it's almost like you get checked off in a way. Like, no, no, these, these people are locked right. up. Well, what it is is that um, that was part of the plan, basically, like that we would, you know, come out of prison with with a lot of money, right? 
go finish our degree uh-huh. and live, you know, comfortable. All by yeah, exactly, exactly. Right, that was the the plan. That's when I started looking, you know, forward. Now, how much are you nabbing now? And like, you hit the ground running. Well, how much know, are y'all nabbing, man? Like, you know, eighty, hundred thousand in, in the seventies. Yeah, yeah, that was, and that's a lot of money. Stacks in a, in mm-hmm. a bank. In a yeah, bank, job, yeah, yeah. bank jobs, don't, bank jobs get people ten thousand dollars now. No, nah, you know that's that's the that's the note pass. <laughs> yeah. that's, like, that's, that's an average. That's an average <laughs> bank robbery. They right? email and shit, no hand pass. over the cash. Yeah, yeah Twitter. You know, but you know, and some, you know, <laughs> and, and some we got up to two hundred. You know, I mean, it was you know, it was Crazy. pretty profitable. And you're living the life. Too. Yeah, yeah, we had apartments all through the city. I seen some pictures of the, yeah, the, the yeah. chicks, y'all. There's some pretty chicks y'all was yeah, with. Man. Yeah, we was we was rolling Cadillacs and the whole nine. Yeah, the whole <laughs> while they're in jail, Dallas, yeah, which so, is crazy. So, so what, what? What you know? The thing was that I, 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 you know, you know, my my mo was take over bank robbery. So when they happened, you know, basically the FBI had a database and they would put you know insert names, you know, certain in there. And then if you would take over bank robbery, your name would appear on that list, right? So basically, like you said, when they see that name, it also say in federal prison, in the custody of the United States Marshals serving. So they would, so it couldn't be you. Yeah, and their minds, are, yeah, that ain't you know what I mean. That's somebody else, you know. Genius. So uh, we had the perfect. Well, we had the perfect alibi. You know what I mean. And 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 uh, you, you said something. Let me th- yeah, you said your modus operandi was commando style takeover right. bank rob- bank robberies. Right. And y'all and, and and you said that. Commando meaning that you would come in with some heavy firepower. Heavy firepower. What, what was your firepower of choice? Uh, well, well, we usually have uh, Milesburg, a Milesburg shotgun, and at that time, and then a, uh, the Army carbine. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, and this is all work to you. Once again, this is yeah, no thrill. This is no high, no no dopamine mm. from like the. The threat of escape and the whole nine. This can, can all can I work for you. Was anybody in all those jobs that you've done? Was anyone ever? Did you ever have to hurt anyone? Not, not in the bank robberies. In in one of the uh, later in uh, one of the um, the uh, it was a payroll joint that we did. And a guard got, you know, he he, he kind of bucked. This is the one in Queens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to get to that. I definitely want to get yeah, to that. Yeah. So, I, so let me ask. So you finish your time in Michigan, right? Kind of like it, it was a problem. Okay. We, we caught a problem. Um, uh, and the, the FBI did eventually get on to us. Uh, to was it another escape or? No, no, no. Okay. No. At the, you know, you know, they got on to us, but they couldn't. Well, the bus driver, yeah, the driver the, got intimidated yeah, and didn't, and, and he, he so it was a technicality. It, yeah, it was a mistake that we made, basically letting him. He kind of okay because sometimes if we if we wasn't at the student union building because we wasn't back yet, right. we knew the route, so right. we would drive to the to, to different parts of where the, where they would pick up at other people's jobs. And then we would get on the bus there, right? Just to be on the bus, then mm-hmm. we'd come back to the jail at right. the same time. Mm-hmm. So he kind of was aware, he, not but, of the bank robbery, but he knew that he wasn't picking the something was off, you. right? Right? Yeah. Like something, something was you yeah. know was a little. Were, were y'all cool with him or? Yeah, we, you know one one of, one of the guys was supposed to be cool with him. You know, what I mean? he didn't butter him up enough. N- obviously, he didn't <laughs> <laughs> because he came back to haunt us. You know, right? So, and it was basically. Uh, uh, because of the type of cars we had, you know, in, in the robberies, we used to use a, a stolen car to, to do the work. And then we would, you know, switch up. Right. And we would switch into three, uh, you know, three different vehicles right. to come out of, out of the, you know, come away from the, 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 the scene of the t- pro- target bank. Yeah. Right. And um, what happened was, you know, because we had, like, luxury cars... Uh, one of the guys didn't get a regular vehicle, and he, he and this work with these drivers, his brother had a car that he went and borrowed. And at one of the banks, there was a it was an accident, not at the bank, but near the bank. Uh-huh. It was a, a little accident, but a little course, fender bender or something like yeah, that. Yeah, but you couldn't stay, and you know because basically, uh, if they so it was came, a little, it was a little. F- Fuck up, right, basically. right. Basically, if they came, you know, the police came, then um, 
you know, how are you gonna explain? You know, so you know, sloppiness, there was a little sloppiness yeah, from one of your sloppy. from one of your people, right. but never from you. You was always no. on point, right? Yeah. So um, at that point, we had a decision to make, and basically, it happened in the supermarket because uh, we were looking for a switch up spot, right? And it happened like a park parking lot, super yeah, supermarket parking lot, and um, one of the guys that get those, um, you know, get the carts and put right. the carts up, yeah. Yeah, he took the license plate down of that vehicle, the, the uh, brother's, the driver's brother's vehicle, and the bank wasn't too far from there. Uh, you know what I mean? So, so they we had a decision them. to make whether or not, you know, we said we didn't come up because it was a, it was a little ways. It was about we, we had went about seventy miles away from the prison. Right. So we didn't come all that far to not do what we came to do. Right. So we, we you know, basically we said like, yo, you know, we didn't know the guy took the license plate mm. though. But we, you know, the fender bender was a little, it still was a Because it's a little, it's loose. Yeah, it was a sign not to, you know, proceed. But, you know, we was there. So we said, man, <clears throat> it's on, you know. <laughs> and, and we went. <laughs> you know what I mean? So later, during the FBI's investigation, you know, all of that came up. And they came back and they got back to that driver. Right. And he kind of have you seen know, anything like, suspicious with these guys? Right, or? right. Came back because the brother said my, my my car is with my brother. And he's at the the, the federal prison. Right. You now, know now, what I'm saying? So that's how they got to the federal prison. Got to him. Yeah. So basically, um, uh, he he started to cooperate. So they they locked us up, and uh, some somehow he they took him out. He took him out to prison. But uh, later, uh, somebody he said he got a visit by some people, and then he refused to testify. Right. So did he get a visit from some people? Yeah, he got. A visit. <laughs> so, so basically, what happened was they 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 they, they dismissed the charges on us at the time because they couldn't prosecute. Him. Right. But they later came back. You know, he had a change of heart. They, they put him in the witness protection program. But that was about two years later. Right. 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 When that happened. So and that led to the that led to the uh, escape, right? Because once uh, you know, I went to we, they took us to Michigan, and um, you know we went to trial. They gave us twenty five years Whew. on that particular case, right? On top of the time that you were doing, no, I fin- we finished that up. Okay, yeah, I got out. You know what I'm saying? We was close to remember we was on their study with these programs, right? Right? We right? Right? We okay. Were close okay. To release on that sentence anyway. Yeah. So basically. Once you know that that little foul up happened, you know we got charged, but they couldn't he, stick. Yeah, they, they, he was the he was. But it was hovering. It was. Yeah, you it had was that hovering. stink on you. Right. Now let's move forward, man, because mm-hmm. I definitely got to got mm-hmm. to catch up to the music industry. Okay. And definitely to graph, but I definitely got to bring this up. This is mm-hmm. you, you. You're back in Queens now. I'm right. Gonna fast forward. It's like 1975. Right. right? Mm-hmm. I think you were you 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 knocked over a, a payroll place, right? Right. Um. Some people got hurt. Right. The, the, um, the guard. The oh. guard got hurt. Mm-hmm. A, fi- a, a firefight took place and 126 shots. No, not, that, there was a lot of shots. Right. On that one. That's, that's another. Okay, that's shooter. another thing. Yeah. So let's get to the 126 shots joint. That's when they captured me off the escape. D- these cops mm-hmm. are firing at you. And mm-hmm. the 126 shots, is it all from them and is, or is it some of it is from you? No, mostly like you know, some was me, but they counted them for it, so it's all good. A hundred and twenty-six <laughs> shots. Internet, you got to understand they, something too. This is in the nineteen seventies, so these are not Glocks. <laughs> yeah. These are these are six-shot revolvers. But it was a whole lot of them. See, the thing was, it was, <laughs> it was a bunch of them boys. Listen, what happened was, uh, so you understand why they came like that. What happened was. Uh, in the first event, when the guard got hurt, there right. was a shootout right. and with these with certain you know police officers at that time. Uh, so once we got captured, we was um, you know charged with you know attempt murder of the police officers, right. also. And mm-hmm. once I escaped, the police officers started <laughs> saying they were. I sent them a threat and right. said I was coming to get them, which doesn't make any goddamn sense. Uh, yeah, I was. Yeah, I wasn't thinking about. But that's that, their right. excuse to, to go hard. Well, body no, that's you. they. They, you know, I guess that's their excuse just for whatever. I don't, you know, I don't know what their policy is, but they said that. You know that I had sent. You know, the word got out. So in my mind, that was a justification to kill me. Yes, Chaz, hold on, hold on for a second. Mm-hmm. You have this history of getting caught. And escaping 
why are these motherfuckers not watching you triple extra? Oh, I was in the maximum security jail. Right. Well, you know, but I'm saying though, max, but but you, you know. still, you, I mean, mm-hmm. oh well, that, well that escape, you know, was a, it wasn't like I'm sewing bars, you know. Right, right. I would figure out a more innovative way <laughs> to, <laughs> to make my move. You know what I mean? So, so get into this incident, man, because it's fascinating to me. 126 shots okay. are firing all over the place, and and specifically they're aimed at you. Right. They was right. they were set up, you yeah. know, to to, uh, they to assassinate you. To, yeah, I was coming to a safe house, and uh, in New York, you know, I was out, I was out of taxi. I was in Georgia, and I was coming. And out. you were a fugitive. I'm a fugitive. Most wanted. Right. From from FBI most wanted. Right. Exactly. From 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 one yeah, of your escapes. I had 25 years for the for the feds man, right. when I escaped. So right. I definitely the feds, the marshals, the New York City police. You know, I was on all the most wanted lists. Right. And, and they, this was and this was this was after the escape, including bounty hunters, including you know guns yeah. for hire. They saying basically they saying you know that you know I'm armed and dangerous, and uh, you know I have. You know, open fire on police officers before, so mainly the, most of them is hyped up and scared. He's threatened to kill police officers. That what's that. what's the bounty on your head, man? I, I I don't even know. Right? Yeah, I don't know. What but this is this they, is they, you know they was all probably offering people money for information. Of course. Yeah. I, I, but I, this is after you escaped impersonating yeah, an somebody inmate. Else. Right. Dallas. He escaped impersonating another <laughs> inmate that was scheduled to release. Yeah. for release. Yeah. So what happened to dude that was scheduled for release? He got he got released uh, uh, that afternoon. <laughs> uh, I thought he might I, I thought he might have got released uh, permanently. No, 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 he, no. He, he he went to them and told them that yo, I'm supposed to go home today. They said you already went home. All <laughs> hell broke loose in the jail. As, yo, internet, listen, man. If y'all have not, because because th- there's there's so much information. If you have mm-hmm. not watched. The episode of American Gangster that depicts Charles William Charles Chaz Williams' life, y'all are fucking up. Please, like, 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 I want to get as much info, but we don't have enough time. Get the DVD please, too. Please go online, get the DVD. <clears throat> this right. is the one of the best stories you will ever, ever, ever watch that happened in real life. This is not no, you know, cowboy John Wayne shit. This shit is real and. You know, it, it, not to not to 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 to, to um, big up the lifestyle of the whole nine, but it is still very empowering that a brother who I think I I, per, I, I would love to he, well, see you take an IQ test, man, well, because I think you're a genius. During, during the course of the time that 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 I did serve, you know, made another decision. I I did earn two bachelor's degrees, right? Of while, course, while in prison, the bachelor's degree in business administration and a bachelor's degree in human service administration. Right. So I, you know, I did, you know, that's after, after the shootout. And basically, the, what I wanted to say about that shootout with the 126, when they came, they were set up to to kill me. Yes, basically. and and you knew that. Yeah. This was this um, was the last straw. Right. And, and and you just got grazed in your forehead. Yeah. I, well, I thought I was hit, but it was. It turned out that the bullet didn't go in. It just. I'm gonna yeah. interrupt you before you go there because yeah. I I really want to. How the fuck were you so fortunate, B? Like, well, what? Like, I had a big did, do call. you pray? <laughs> did you pray? Was it your your skills? Were like, what? They the- were scared. So basically, you know, they had bullet holes in people's houses on both sides of the street. So they, <laughs> they, they were right. just popping off, right? You know what I'm saying? And Reckless. Yeah, because I, I I really I tried to I tried to ram the car when I realized what they when they tried to cut my car. You know what I mean? So my first instinct, because I saw the dude leveling his gun to my windshield, mm. was to ram his car and, and and grab grab my weapon. You know what I mean? So you know it got it got kind of crazy. You know what I mean? So you get caught. Yeah. They basically basically give you a life sentence. Of, they yeah, give you a sentence of ninety five years. years. Yeah. Yeah, and like then you just twenty five year sentences and one twenty year sentence all running consecutive, which added up to ninety five. And then you had the wherewithal to Well that 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 that's what put me in the law that's why I can read contracts today actually. Right. <laughs> Cause I went I went in that law library and um And you chopped that shit down, man. Yeah, I chopped it down uh good enough to it took me fifteen years to right. do it. It wasn't like, you know, but you just fifteen years is a out. whole lot better yeah. than ninety five years. Yeah, but you know they had parole, but exactly. you still would have did a substantially more time with, right. with ninety five, even on the in the parole situation, because you know, they, they even parole people with life sentences sometimes. Right. That's okay. why they, that's why they specify when they give some people life, they say life with no parole. Right. right? I see. You know what I'm saying? So 
Um, you know, basically, you know, you, you do 10 and you go to the parole board and, and any sentence, uh, at that time over 45 years. You know what I mean? So, you know, what happened was, you know, I got into the law library. I worked with the lawyers and I, I basically got some of the sentences stoned out. I couldn't get them all knocked down. You know what I mean? So they was running some of the sentences concurrently. Right. And, uh, together. And, um, as opposed to consecutive, which is just back to back to back. Back to back, right. So, you know, it took me 15 years of hard fighting to eventually get paroled, you know, and get it down to where I could get paroled. Right. And, uh, you know, in that course in time, I earned the two degrees and, you know. Chaz, I got to tell you something. You are the movie. Everything mm-hmm. we're talking about here is, this is the movie. Mm-hmm. There, there is a kid. That, that went to Spofford in the Bronx and had to get cuffed because two years earlier, Chaz was like, wait a minute, they ain't cuffing me? I'm out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, they did. At, they at every step. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, right. Right. The pews with seizures, right. You, you got people changing policy. Now, mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, let's say no snitching, but I can't mm-hmm. imagine that the Alphabet Boys wouldn't want to come to you and say, hey, listen, would you be a consultant for us? <laughs> because, you know, you're thinking... Mm-hmm. You, you're thinking on a futuristic level, yeah. and I mean, we got Russians over here now mm. that are going in with um, you know, big time automatics and you know, breaking into the bank. O- the only thing to me more hard body than, than breaking into a bank anyway mm. is is fucking up Wall Street. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, well, what I do now, I would never do that for them. But what I do now is, uh, you know, I go into the prisons and you know, do some prison outreach stuff, you know, and try to help the brothers get get up out of there. You know, mm. I, I do a lot of that type of stuff. You know. Uh, and do uh, some reentry stuff, you know. If they come out, try to get them. You know. Reentry is really important, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reentry is definitely important. Uh, you I'll, know, we don't get no money for, it, but they got a lot of money out there that they give to the wrong people, right? And it never goes to the guys that you know toward uh, programs that go to the guys that are coming home, and you know need you know uh, jobs and other support systems to stay out of prison. So you 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 come out in 1989. Yeah. You spent 15 years when you went in. Gerald Ford was the president, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you, when you come out, Bush Senior is the president, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. How had the world changed? Like, how was it? Like, yeah, it was it was uh, changed. But you know what 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 kept me going? What I did was I I kind of kept up with the current events some kind of way and. You know, basically, anytime somebody came in, you know, I, like, I, you know, like I knew a lot of people, and basically, when any New Yorkers or uh, uh, DC guys, I was, I was cool with a lot of people. So basically, I would talk to these guys that come that come in, and try to stay abreast on what, what the, uh, what the, the biggest change was hip hop. <laughs> right. That was the biggest change because it wasn't when I came in. Yeah, there wasn't. It wasn't there like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? But by the time I got out. You know, it was full blast, basically. And you get out now, and it's a whole new scene. It's New yeah. Jack City. Yeah, it's crack on the streets. Right. There wasn't crack when you went in. Nah. Um, you're the OG to cats that are OG. So you're mm-hmm. the OG now mm-hmm. to like Kenneth Supreme McGriff mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Prince and all those cats. Right. Yeah. What was your relationship with them, man? My relationship was good. You like, know, how like, did you we know? We all like, came from like the same same area. You right. know what I mean? And. Um, Are you a little older than them? Or? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, we all, you know, basically we all got along. It wasn't no, you know. But they showed, did they show you a little bit extra? They helped, yeah. Well, basically they, you know, we, we, we showed each other mad respect okay. because, you know, we respected what we both laid down. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, um, was the, when you came out, was the whole crack thing, was that... Just mind blowing to you, or you? No, because I was inside. Right. And again, I got pretty adept in the law, you know. So I was following when guys come in with with, with cases that dealt with crack. I was all over it, you know. I would try to help them fight their cases, right. get reversals, and I got and I and I, I won a few cases while I was in there. That's you crazy. Know what I'm saying That's so. Crazy. Uh, but you come out though, and you seeing zombies now. Was that yeah. different to you? No, nah, because they had the different kind of zombies before that. Right, you know, with right. the heroin. Heroin, yeah. yeah. It was like, yeah. That was like crazy. So it's always been in, in, in the hood. It's always been drugs and devastation, you know. Exactly. But, yeah. Even alcohol. Like, you, alcohol, you know, the store in every corner, you know, right. and it goes. So, yeah, it, you know, the, that kind of devastation I was basically used to, you right. know. And you, you see it when, when people come in, they got to. You know, kick the habit or they, you know, whatever, or they, or they try to keep the habit, one or the other. 
So, um, you know, I was pretty, like I said, I stayed pretty current, you know what I mean? It, it wasn't like I was uh, just just taken away. I was taken away physically, but mentally I kept up on everything. Stay sharp. Yeah. Stay sharp. So you come home, you start the Black Hand Entertainment, you're right. doing party promotions, you meet mm-hmm. the Mike Tysons and mm-hmm. the Snoop Dogs and the whole nine, right. the Jay-Zs, the Damon Dashes, mm-hmm. the Lee York Cohens, you're getting these deals. Right. Um, how did you meet 50 Cent? Uh, he, you know, he's from the neighborhood. Basically, he's from Southside, and uh, you know, I had, a, I had a, like a, you know, a little studio there that in in, in the hood, and uh, I had some artists that I was working with, and basically, you know, he had a little buzz then, and uh, somebody brought him up to, you know, the the Black Hand office, right. and from there we, you know, we kind of hit it off pretty good. And, uh, Did you have any idea back then that he was going to well, be, you know, the artist that he is today? I knew he was special, right? You, you know what I'm saying? Right. When I, you know, like, because he, plus he had like he he would do special shit back then, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? He went some one time somebody he was somewhere with uh, the track masters. They had these girls that you know got in an argument when they was uh, supposed to be recording, and they just left the studio. So he took the studio time. And probably recorded like 30, 36 records or some shit. Right. You know, he just went in. He didn't waste time. Right. And, and I used to, you know, he had songs with Destiny Child back then, a bunch of shit he had. That he know? wasn't supposed to really have for right, a new artist. Right. right. And so, but you know, like he was all, and he would do even the Ghetto Quran. I mean, it wasn't a great, great idea, but he put that together, you know, but. He always knew how to keep his buzz. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So he, he, he I knew that he was special. You know right. what I mean? I, I didn't know what, what the future would bring, but I knew that he had special talents. Right. Now we were, take him we were all working at the, cause you know, Ed Woods, my, my, my partner was, right. was was representing you. We were representing D. Dot Angeletti. Right. When they did How to Rob, right. did you think that was going to be a problem? Me and him talked about it. I just told him, like, I said, that's a hell of a record. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But no, nah, I, I didn't, you know, we didn't really care. I just told him at that time, I said, we're going to do this management thing and I'm going to come in. I said, now is the time right. when that record was coming out. Right. You know, so I basically traveled with him. You know, uh, to different cities, you know, when he's performing the record, you know. So, so, so how did y'all have a falling it, out? Uh, it, it wasn't, it wasn't so much of a falling out. I, I think that, um, you know, Ja Rule, you know, I, like, I did a, I did a record called Black Gangster. Right. And I basically. Ja Rule, I, DMX. Right. 50 Cent. Was 50 that, on that album? 50 was on that Jay-Z, that's Jay-Z. the only record you'll find them on together. Probably, right. You know, but. Yeah, so I'm cool with everybody. And you're you know? trying to make money. Yeah, I'm trying to, you know, so. And you're trying to keep everybody cool. Exactly. And it just was a lot of little friction in that. And so at the time, uh, I had a release date for that, that, that album. And, you know, so I, I basically told him that, because he was also, it was like a co-manager. He had another guy that was working with him, uh, Bernard. That mm-hmm. was his name. And uh, so I told him I had to start paying attention to this, this album, I basically was an independent, and, and you were was, funding the whole I thing. Was funding the whole thing, so I said, "Man, listen, you know, you, you it ain't like you gonna be by yourself. You got Bernard, and uh, you know, basically that was it. We didn't, we didn't fall out, you know, in, in that sense. You know, I think later on, I think he uh, said that you know I didn't come by or call his mother. I mean, he's calling not his mother. He didn't call his grandmother." Uh, contact his grandmother when he was shot. Right. You know, and, um. Cause he mentioned you in the many men. Yeah, so, yeah, he, he probably you know, figured he said, out. said, Slim, switch sides on me. Right. And you're Slim. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So I just think that, you know, he, he probably believed that I probably was aware of something or could have stopped something. Right. And, uh, and I think he thought that when I didn't contact his his, his grandmother uh, about him, that you know whatever you know it was you know. But I, I kind of knew anyway what was up with him because the guy I was telling you about Bernard would keep me post you know posted on. So his, you were already getting yeah I'm getting the information you know I and mean, I, I didn't just want to start popping up. You know, at the hospital and all that, because I I knew that there would be some kind of investigation with right. my history. It wouldn't be 
good for me to be around. Like exactly. That. You know what I'm saying? So I basically just stayed, you know, stayed away from it. Have you spoken to him since? Uh we 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 saw each other um, once at uh, Chris Lighty's office a, a while ago, just before he got to deal with uh, Shady. Wait, wait, um, Interscope. Yeah, with Interscope. Yeah, right. just before he did that, he was he was getting you know he was on the move then to blow, and then I saw him again in Puerto Rico. Uh, we we at, at Chris Lighty's office we spoke. You know, Puerto Rico. You know, by then he was. That that new fifty cent, right. you know, what I'm saying right. mad security and all that, and basically it was like a distance thing. You know, we, we saw each other, and that was that. Right. Okay. So let's get to the present, man. <clears throat> oh, I, I want to rewind real quick and say that um, those events that used to go down at Encore, a lot of that was Black Hand promotion. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, Encore was the shit. <laughs> shout out! To, shout out to, to Queens. Mm-hmm. Shout out to the Coliseum. Mm-hmm. Shout out to anybody that had to take the bus to the encore <laughs> <laughs> or the subway. However, you got there for real. So now you're working with Graf. Yeah. What's going on? With, what's going on with you, Graf? Just working hard, man. Trying to win. I'm coming up under this man here, so you know I got the the best uh, mentor in the world. I could either put out music or rob a fucking bank. Right. And it was about to eat. You know what I'm saying? So right. right now we just um. Trying to get through the politics, man. I've been around a long time, working hard for forever. We didn't you, never, have, you've, you've had an album out, right? Nah, I never was fortunate enough to put but, an album out. But you were supposed to have an album out. Supposed to do all kinds of shit. The politics and be all in the way. What, what, deal, what labels were you, were you signed through? Uh, first it was Sony. Then okay. we went to uh, fucking with Rockefeller. Yeah, Def Jam. And we fucked with Koch. You supposed to come out through Rockefeller? Def, Def, Rockefeller, Def, Def Jam? It was basically Def Jam. It's Def Jam, yeah. yeah Basically, it was Def Jam. The deal was through Def Jam, but when Def Jam it was facilitated Jam. With, by um, Dame and and Biggs. They right. they they you know uh, helped get us a deal. By then, I think Rockefeller was getting ready to fold, split. dissolve itself. Yeah, yeah it was, it was, the sale was right in that period. Mm-hmm. Actually, when they you know. So a lot of politics got in the way and uh, politics. Yeah, politics. You should say for damn sure, and really messed up a lot of beautiful opportunities. That, right. You know, we could have had to climb over that hump. And then y'all did a deal with Koch, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah we did a deal with Koch. We did like a distribution, but okay. basically, like not not so much that they fund anything. You know. I'm I'm reading on the internet, man. That 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 you just keep putting records out. Oh yeah, I'm I'm. I'm I work. I go hard. This is all I know. Like what? Other, what else am I gonna do? This exactly. is my life's work. I'm not going back to the street. I'm exactly. gonna keep doing this till I win bigger and bigger and retire my mother and put my whole family on. You know what I'm saying? That's how we gonna do this. Thing. So, in a perfect world, where do you see your record coming out? If you if you if you want to put a record out, well, even, whenever, whenever, it's a whole different world. Right no, no, now. I do. I, I I definitely do because um I make music because I have something to offer and something to say. So. I definitely want to see that happen in uh, 2011. It looks like it's going that way because through the knowledge I learned with this man and a lot of things I experienced on my own and just years experience in the game, I um, have, have another company called Team Bang, okay, which is um, an association with Black Hand. Of course, this is my family, but we have. But I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I read somewhere that you yeah. were also the CEO of Black Hand. Not a CEO. I'm okay, the, I'm the president. Okay, so that's what you said. Basically, everything I know is from my own experiences of what he showed me and what we learned together and combination of everything. I'm, I'm, I'm literally like a sponge and I soak this thing up. So <clears throat> right now I've been blessed with the opportunity to have some some good investors, some good partners. Good. His advice, his direction, and we have another company called Team Bank. Team Bank. Team, Team Bank. Team Bank. Team Bank. Team yeah, Bank, okay. Yeah, so um, you know, we're going to do some beautiful things this year. Try okay. It, and really... And really Really, really, we're gonna add all our knowledge, all our experience, all the beautiful music, and uh, all types of other magical elements that I don't want to mention, and put them all in one pot and make something new for y'all. Yeah, see, Team Bang is basically uh, a company that that he's gonna he's gonna run, similar to what you might see with Young Money Cash Money. Okay, you know, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's coming, you know. Uh, but you're the flagship. So, yeah, he's, yeah, he's 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 the, the 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 face and everything behind the company and the CEO of that company. You know, and uh, you know, my partner too, Max Wayne. Let me yeah. What's going on, sir? Shout my man out. And uh, basically, we just come in with, with in, in 2011 with with something new and fresh. Mm-hmm. You know, um, combined with you know the skills he's always had, um, and you know, as as 
uh, Black Hand Entertainment, you know, when we deal with artists, we kind of always groom our artists to be, you know, leaders. Right. You know what I'm saying? And and to artist think, development, which doesn't exist right, anymore. Right. And think, you know, think big. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so um, you know, to be businessmen. Right. You know what I mean? And uh, that's what's happening. You okay. know, it's an evolution of. You know, like Black Hand is bigger than music, and right. you know, so basically, you know, Team Bang is 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 that that other new young movement, okay. you know, that's getting it's ready like Cash to, Money, and then it's Young, young Money, right, right? I got you, right. I got you, and, he, and he's going to be that that face and and uh, uh, force behind uh, Team Bang. Okay, now, now Team Bang is of course based in New York. Yeah, mm-hmm. but you got you know you've got connections up and down the east eastern seaboard, uh, Midwest you, Midwest as well, whole country really. Yeah, yeah, the whole country basically. Are, are artists from Team Bang going to be multi regional or are y'all all Definitely. right now from New York and, and and different genres as well? Like I have one pop star from uh, Connecticut who's crazy. I have um a, a Jamaican pop star type of mashup, some crazy shit. This dude is fucking retarded. Named King Charlton And I got my, my man Nat Who's crazy Street rapper from Long Island You know what I'm saying We're just doing different things And the doors are open To all types of genres man It's not just about Any specific thing It's just, just music Okay It's just music Well you let's do this There's something to offer then. We, The doors is open Let's do this man We've been talking for a long time And that's what we do We talk now, that's But real. whenever we have an artist In the station mm-hmm. We put the spotlight on them I like the spotlight Let's and, do that And you know Like we, we are the internet. So you know we want some. We want to feed the machine. We want to feed Good. the beast. We want, feed that we want to see too. you up on on not right and two dope boys and, oh, and, and yeah. the rest Shout of. Shout out to all the blogs that support so, me, man. Not so, right, two dope boys. So a king is about everybody. to throw on a beat right now. Free on smash, and oh, I just want you to kill it, B. Uh, uh, uh. Turn it up a little. Uh, uh. Turn it up a little. Uh, uh. Here we go. I said, hey. I'm so appalled, spalding ball, darling, get out my spalding balls, bounce in your mouth, fall in your drawers, ah, uh, menage a trois, say ah, uh, ah, uh, mommy play ball, I don't want hair with a condom, I want it in your face raw, if I get a rape charge on a date, great job, I don't wait, you get your draw shaved with a chainsaw, cause life's a date. Straight hard with miles for days till she drives away with the license plate off Cause miles away another try and drive the same car We all shopping in the same lingerie store It's like a brake job break She don't like the brakes She like the brakes off But I like a paint job So I wipe the stains off Till a bunch of dirt's on me It's only cause the underworld's lonely She knows he cause them other girls on me Some are white trash with nice asses Cause my dick ain't for colored girls only mm. I save it for your mother and for cover girls only Shove it in the oven let the rubber burn slowly When will they learn I got a Romani And a Petty And a great perm And she let us take turns <laughs> Bitch can't cook She let my steak burn But I'm eating for two I gotta feed my tape worm First date turn Then a birthday sperm Home run When you get the first base turn And run around a diamond Let the gold in my chain And run around a diamond A lot of Africans Lost their life in the cave Trying to run around to find them mm. You look close You still see their blood Up in the diamond Stuck up in the line and and go from blue to red like the balls up in the siren when it spun around inside them. Whoop! How left you dumb enough to comment? The rims on my truck high up enough to climb it. Speeding up the sunrise, fucking up the climate. The air pressure got me high up enough to vomit. Yup! Plus I'm dumb high puffing up exotic. Plus I'm dumb high puffing up exotic. To be as high as me, try jumping up a comet. Jump! You talk too much. What it do, Bama? Don't speak unless you spoken to when you answer. The crackers in my hood looking for a used hammer. Or filming dirty ex kids on the news camera. I had a wick card. I was a food stamper. Cause I can't dress my daughter in a used pamper. Mm. And for Christmas I gotta get a her wish list. Like here's some new pants. You should spare a new sand and no. Cause if I knew them I would get a few answers. I need more than dirty clothes up in a huge hamper. Oh. And my shooter's hammer's huger than the booty on a loop dance. And my Uzi shoot antlers. 
I'm sick enough to get a flu cancer. I put your name on a funeral plan, a Bama. Who are you? You try and shoot the two hander? Then why you ice grilling looking like you Zoolander? Cause light blue ice blues make my jewels damp, but oh, my jacket alligator and my shoes panda. And your girl in my out. I got a two amped up and busting out of a pants, Bruce Banner. Boom! A cute man, I uh, might ask, are you the hooker I saw on the classified ass? Cause mm. I was looking for a high class, white trash, blonde hair, blue eyed bitch with a black girl size ass. We take pipe in the ass till it might rash. She easy, she be sucking me off just to buy gas. When she see me, then she say I'm the black Eminem. Then when she catch Eminem, then she call him the white graph. Woo! <laughs> now I'm serious, why I laugh? I eat rappers, I don't care if they black, white, half. I don't care if they breathe fire, eat dirt, cry grass. A happy meal of my I turn them to French fried ass. Spaz, I slash, I turn them into a half. Then I make them a fraction and turn them into a slash. Then I make them a casket and turn them into a ash. Then I place it in acid and turn them into a slash. I turn them into a blast. I'm sick. I take the rap game and I turn it into a rash. Cause radio take the game and turn it into a bath. Oh. Who's this here? Huh? Huh? It don't stop. Huh? Don't stop. Internet, it don't huh? stop. You got grab, huh? internet. Huh? Huh? Where we at? Let me bring it back so I ain't missing nothing. I say, hey, 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 hey. I said, um, I'm serious. Why I laugh? I eat rappers. I don't care if they black, white, half. I don't care if they breathe fire, green, dirt, cry grass. A happy meal in my turn on the French fried ass. Spaz, I slash and turn them into a half. Then I make them a fraction and turn them into a slash. Then I make them a casket and turn them into an ash. Then I place it in acid and turn them into a splash. I turn them into a blast. I'm sick. I take the rap game and I turned it into a rash. This radio take the game and turn it into a bath. It took the Titanic and turned it into a raft and placed the Right next to a rubber duck till I stepped in a Hummer truck convertible and I crashed to your front door and knocked your furniture through the grass. You're looking at the eyes of a murderer through a mask that'll turn you into the past. Rappers wear fake chains so when I eat them up like a burger, I'm chewing glass. Verbally, I turn them. Uh, hold on. <laughs> Woo! See where I'm going with this, man. Internet, you hear this? Style right there. Yeah, man, it's fun. Yo, excellent, 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 man. Thank you, man. So, Chaz. Yeah. When is the movie coming out, man? Uh, well, your shit is a movie, B. Yeah, we 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 have, we've been talking to some people, you know, in Hollywood, in Hollywood, yeah, Good. in California. Uh, some real yeah. names, like some real names. Yeah, right? yeah, we have, you know, it's a script already written. Okay, and uh, you know, actually, uh, one of the writers on it was Cheo, who did the biggest. Story. Cheo Hodari uh, yeah, Coker, yeah, 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 and uh, he's uh, a great writer, man. Yeah, and another brother named Jamal. Um, uh, so where we at now is basically the script is there. Um, Don Cheeto had expressed the interest in you know in playing you, right? Okay, yeah. that's big, um, man. Yeah. So. Although that's a stretch because you're tall. How tall are you? I'm six three. And uh, Don Cheeto's not that tall. No, no, he's not. But he's a hell of a he's a yeah, tall he's a tall ass guy. He can pull it off. Shoot him, yeah. They gonna have to shoot uh, shoot it low. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he can pull it, it, it off. A, it's for that. It's it was the seventies. The seventies. He'll be a platform shooter. Exactly. <laughs> with that, right? Yeah, he's a uh, he. Could, he could probably pull it off. You and know, and you, I mean, he was interested in, in in doing it, but really, yeah. Uh, um, Dark Cheadle. Yeah, Star you know, the chats. guy that, that that I would think could really pull it off for me would be Idris Elba. However, yeah, I don't sure. know if 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 you know the, attaching that name could get yeah. the, the budget that they need to um, make unfortunately, it. Unfortunately, Hollywood is like that. Yeah. Like you could have the best black actor attached to a to a, to a to a, a, a vehicle, mm. but if he doesn't command that, then they're not they're not interested. Yeah. They got, he has to be a big name, but right. Idris would be crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So they out there. Um, you know, I got some people out there that are you know working at it. Um, hopefully, you know, uh, we get some positive stuff going on after the uh, new year. Okay. And uh, hopefully, we make it happen. Okay. Now, what about the years. book? Are you doing the book, man? I, you know, I've been asked to do the book. I haven't, but uh, it actually was. I was. It was mentioned to me this evening, and I'm. A, I'm gonna look into it again, and I'm going to. Uh, Look into it. Um, I may have to go to the bio channel and get, cause you know, on the, on the, uh, the biography channel, on their, on their site, 
they got a little book. Basically, I don't even know where they got that. Oh, about you? Yeah. Really? Yeah. They, yeah, definitely. You go that might be a little there. legal. And they selling it or no? No, it ain't a like a book, but it's just like it's just like a. Uh, you know, it's, 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 it's an info some, page for right, people to read. Right. Okay, yeah. I see what you're saying. So they got some, yeah, they got something. Uh, I think they got something on the bio channel called uh, Gangsters or something like right. that. And then if you go in there, it's in alphabetical order. And then if you you know you go to it, go to my name, it has information. I don't know how they got it right. in there. Yeah, they they <laughs> basically cover the story, you know, because they got the the DVD. Right. I mean, not that they got the the BET piece BT, yeah. that they're playing uh, now. And uh, you know they 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 kind of thorough with it. So if if I didn't cover something, they, they check them it. out. Right, right. <laughs> but I mean, yeah. but you being the main source, man, and like you know, I think the, the the best things about autobiographies that other sources can't capture is like like this interview right now. You telling me what's going on through your head mm-hmm. and like the feelings that you have because you got to have that human emotion and right. you know like and of course you know you're a fearless man but you do have your fears and you got mm-hmm. you know, in a book like that you got definitely got to bring that out man right, so right. I would love to be able to read you mm-hmm. know your story sometime yeah. soon man so mm-hmm. I hope that happens man and then what's going on with the, with the whole with the whole team bang man what what are some of the artists that you have signed right 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 now it was um the guy King Charles and I named right. previously and my man Nat who will be tearing up the fucking streets in okay. um, about five seconds. Okay. But I'm the flagship guy, and uh, my partner's Max Wayne. We're putting this thing together and making it as beautiful as it can be. You know right. what I'm saying? And, and one more thing, man. Tell me about the, the – y'all are doing a prison tour? Oh, we, we always – Always have been. Okay. Yeah, we always have done that. You know, we go into the prisons uh, – you know, I, I go in and participate with some of the events that they have in prisons, and we, we as well go in – and bring entertainment, like to take the, the guys away for, you know, a few hours of what they're going through, you know, and we go in and perform. Uh, you know, a few artists have, you know, participated, including Ja Rule, and he went to the federal prison with us, and uh, where was that? We were in a Coleman for Coleman federal your cousin, prison. Okay. Yeah, Matula Chicago. Yeah, Matula was down there, so I went in there. I perform at all of them as well, yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. Can, I ask, you, can um, I ask you something now? With the rate that we incarcerate people now, when you when you go to these prisons now, do you feel like, I mean, are you just seeing tens of thousands of black faces? It's a lot of it's a lot of black faces. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's you know, I mean, it's 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 it's, it's, it's per population. You know, I think that you know, unless we in Utah or Iowa, you know, those other the other states like you know New York and that it's a large you know metropolitan areas Atlanta you know Georgia is probably a large black population incarcerated you right. know yeah so you know it's unfortunate man but it's you know it, it's, it's there's a book I read called um, the New Jim Crow have you heard of it yeah let me see where I heard that by at. Michelle Alexander I just somebody from California it's an amazing book man yeah and, and it out, talks yeah, about yeah. how the system right now is not really based on crime. Mm. It's just once again feeding the economic beast because jail is a big business. Big right. And of business. course, when they well, declare it's, it's war on drugs, it's really war on people of color. Right. Well, you know, I mean, just the basic. You know, if you just look at the basic uh, makeup of it. You know, do you really think that the police want crime to stop? Because if it stops, they wouldn't have no jobs. Exactly. If it stops, they the judges wouldn't have jobs. Exactly. And, you know? and the company that makes the paper that the docket sheet gets written on you wouldn't have no jobs. You know what I mean? You know? They lose business. So what, whatever stores making that nasty ass bologna sandwich. Yeah, they. I think I think the system perpetuates <laughs> for local crime. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? Perpetuates the status quo of how this system operates. You know. And uh, unfortunately, you know, we are the targets. Right, of course. And and, and it's, you know, it's a, I mean, it's a bad deal, especially in this economic climate. You know, it's, 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 it's going to get worse. Right, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you, man, what do you think about, you know, the recent glorification of the life of gangsters, particularly with our youth? Uh, you know, I, I mean, the, the, the people that I find that glorify it ain't really... The people that's in it, right? You know what I'm saying. I think that that you know that's that's you know it's it, they, they talk about it, but it's not attributed to us. And and I think it's kind of unfair when they don't talk about the Godfather like that. They don't talk about the Scarface movie like that. You know, and there's several other movies that actually you know 
um, Sopranos. Right. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff out there that you know uh, you could say glorifies their lifestyle. You know what I mean? But it is a part of our lifestyle, and, pe- and people are just talking about it. So. Right. You know, basically, if there's an artist that's talking about something that's going on the street, it's just something that's going on. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, the Sopranos have actually represent some, supposedly anyway, some real mafia family that was in, you know, based on in Jersey or something like that. But, um, you know, when when artists, I don't think they glorify it. I just think they, they, they're like uh, the newscasters right. for us. You know what I mean? And they're just saying what they see every day. When they walk out their doors, right. you know it's mad poverty, it's mad crime, it's mad drugs. You know, it is what it is, and it's, it's definitely you know a lot of young deaths that you know unfortunately uh, it wasn't happening, right. but it is. You know, so they they talk about it, and and I, and I add that a lot of um, dudes that do talk about it that might not be really about it are not as fortunate. Enough to have somebody like Chaz or a real OG body side where they know the real, so they kind of misguided, and some of the information is not official because they don't, they only know what they heard and they heard from somebody else and heard from somebody else, so they might glorify some of the wrong shit, or some of them might think something like snitching is okay, or somebody in their crew could have told and still be in their crew, or all type of weirdo shit that goes on because they might not be fortunate enough. Well, I consider it fortunate. To be next to somebody with that type of experience and that type right. of know-how, I'd have to hear it from somebody that heard it from somebody that heard it. Like all the stories he's telling you, you'd be amazed at what niggas in the street be saying. Yo, I heard your son did this and this and that, son, and it's it's true to them. But I'm like, no, it didn't go like that. Right, right. You know right. what I'm saying? And then the information gets twisted and put in the music, and you got kids running around crazy because they 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 misinformed. Right now, mm-hmm. and and I guess the second part of that question is watching your story, man. It, you know, one of the things that that stands out. Is you seem to be a very principled man, so Rega- man. Rega- regardless what you were doing, if if it was deemed as right or wrong, you had a principle and you had a code, and the people or the majority of the people that wrote with you had a code. Do you feel that those codes have kind of eroded as t- as time has moved on? I think that like for those s- principles, I mean, and they are just basic principles, and I think that uh, they 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 have. Uh, Eroded in 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 the street culture that's out there now, right. and um, you know it's un- it's unfortunate because it's basic stuff like you know what 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 okay let's just take talk about you know snitching right and um, you know what what when I came up you know it it that was totally unacceptable right and it was right. an unwritten. Code. Right, it's it wasn't a code. fad to be wearing no shirts saying no snitching. It was an right, unwritten yeah, code. Yeah, yeah all, all, all of that is crazy. You know, <laughs> it's, 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 then it's just left for a lot of interpretation. But you know, the thing that I would say is, what do you think would happen? And how do you think? You know, you know how the government or you know, the police they were like, "Yo, help yourself" or whatever. What, what do you think would happen if uh, there was a soldier in Afghanistan and he was captured, mm-hmm. and that soldier would? They they tell him like we gonna let you go. We ain't gonna chop your head off. You know what I mean? And we not gonna keep you in prison. We gonna let you go, but we want to know where your platoon is at. We need some secrets. We we need we need to know where they at. Mm-hmm. You know what you mean? know what they call that? Well, WikiLeaks. Yeah. Well, and he tells them where they are at, right. and they go wipe out his platoon. What do you think? You think that he was helping himself? What do you think the government would do to that? So basically, he's you know, seen as a traitor. It's a traitor. Yeah, it's a traitor. yeah, so that's the basic principle. You know what I'm saying? If you with somebody, you with somebody. You if you do the crime, then it's if you with them, you with them. Right, you know exactly. What I mean? it's, 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 you know, it ain't no. And and basically, you, you, you know, they would p- promote back then because it was a lot of hand to hand combat. You know, uh, if you're captured, name, rank, and serial number. That's all you give up. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was part of the government's indoctrination for the soldiers. Right. You know that fought for them, I and mean, that was a rule of war. Also, that's a rule of war. Yeah, yeah. So basically, you know, if if you're, it's almost the same. So if if say in 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 Colombia, there's a DEA agent, and he's an undercover agent, and he's captured, and they say, listen, we gonna you know either you gonna we gonna bury you here, or you give us the names of every agent that's in this country and his identity where he's at, and Help yourself. We gonna let you go, and he does that. 
and they go kill all the DEA agents, what do you think that they would call him? Oh, he's complicit in that whole, that yeah, whole, exactly. Like, yeah. Exactly. So, you know, it's those principles, man. It's basically if you with somebody, you win them. You know what I'm saying? And those principles are misconstrued and eroded in today's culture, street culture. Okay, know? now, before you leave, man, what would you want to say to these kids out here, man? Like, you, you have worlds of experience and like Graf said, he's fortunate enough mm-hmm. to be around somebody like you where he just gets the gems on an hourly basis. Mm-hmm. What what major gem do you want to leave to these kids out here today, man? You know, uh, I would say that, you know, you have to understand your consequences. If you understand your consequences, then some of the bad decisions you might make, you might not make them. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of times, you know, when a person gets ready to do something, and I just got to go to this on on the street side of it, and then, you know, he doesn't understand. He's not educated about what he's getting into. He doesn't know the law. He doesn't know, you know, he's not prepared to even commit the crime right. You so know he's what I'm ignorant saying? of all. Yeah, and basically when they grab him and they say, you know you're facing 40 years, he gonna, and his response is, what you talking about? I ain't built for that. Right. What the fuck is you talking about? You ain't built. You just you did whatever you did. You know what I'm saying? So... A lot of times, if you understand the consequences of what you do, you may not make that bad decision. Right. You know what I'm saying? And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with getting a job or right. doing something else. You, you know what I'm saying? If you you ain't built for this, then go to work. Right. Exactly. You know what I mean? All right, Graf. You want to you want to leave the audience with anything, man? That was pretty damn good. Yeah, that's that's a hard. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but in general, I, I believe that um. On, on, on top of that too I don't believe in doubt I don't believe in second guessing yourself I don't believe in a fucking plan B <laughs> If you set out to achieve it Make that happen Right You go hard till it happens There's no turning back I don't give a fuck it, like, it, I could even relate it to music I don't care if you use the wackest rapper out Many a whack ass rapper is rich right now exactly. You know what I'm saying So right. do what you do Follow your dream And make it happen for yourself You know what I'm saying That's 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 one thing I can say And try to provide a better life for you Your family and your friends Cause Nobody can hustle forever you know Exactly what I'm So exactly. the music thing Is like a gift It's a gift For every dude That was ever out here In the street Doing anything That he that he felt he had to do This music thing Is a blessing So if you do get a chance To experience it Then make sure It's worthwhile Exactly Well, Word. well internet's there You have it Chaz yeah. Thanks for coming through Graph no, This has been a great anytime. show Word. You know whenever, yeah. whenever you got something That you want to You know you want to Showcase on the show just let me know. Y'all know how to reach us, man. This has been a great show. Right. Dallas, you, you 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 got anything to say before we sign oh, off? Let me say this real quick, yes, too. Sir. Everybody listening, man, if you're listening, you're on the internet already, hit the fucking Twitter. Holla at your boy, boy, boy. Twitter.com slash graph, G-R-A-F-H. Let me know you're listening. I retweet the shit and all of that type of hip-hop crap. Holla back. One. Internets. Free on smash. Free on smash. <laughs> hey, King. There you go. Constant elevation. Dream your dreams. And man up and live them dreams. Because a life without dreams is black and white. And the universe flows in surround sound. And Technicolor Combat Jack Radio Show. We are signing off. Blow. Cheer. 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 Cheer.